What to feed your pet ant colonies? After years of keeping various different species of Australian ants, I've gathered a decent understanding of what you should and shouldn't feed your pet ants and why. Stick around to find out the number one food that if you're not too careful, can actually kill entire ant colonies. First and foremost, all ants require a source of sugary goodness, but why? This is because ants are constantly on the move, either foraging for food, cleaning themselves or tending to eggs, and therefore require a source of energy to maintain their active lifestyle. And you guessed it, sugary foods are the perfect source of edible energy for these awesome creatures. Usually my go-to source of sugar for my colonies is a drop or two of honey, which conveniently is always readily available as it actually comes from my mum's beehive. We literally have tens of litres at a time. Luckily I've experimented with other sources of sugary goodness to fulfil my pets though. The first alternative to honey is maple syrup, which is happily lapped up by both my big headed ants and bull ants. However, if you don't own any maple syrup, don't fear, as there are more alternatives to come. The next option that seems to work quite well is jam, and in comparison to honey or maple syrup, it is quite the treat for my little ants. I specifically use strawberry jam, however any type should work quite well. Here you can see my fedole munching down on it. My fourth and final suggestion would be to dissolve some sugar into some water. This is known as sugar water. If you're having trouble dissolving your sugar, try warming up the water just a little in the microwave. However, ensure the solution is fully cooled before offering it to your ant colonies. This is to prevent any injuries or deaths that could occur from the hot liquid. If you're wanting to step up your ant keeping game even further, try adding a drop or two of food colouring to your sugar water. When the ants consume the liquid, the abdomens will expand and reveal the coloured solution, changing the colour of your ants and their brood, which is always fun to watch. Now that your ants have had their sugary fix, it's time to consider what protein you'll be feeding your ant colony. Now this part isn't as straightforward and requires a bit of trial and error, especially depending on the species that you keep. Protein is a key aspect in an ant's diet. This is because the brew requires protein to develop into a fully grown adult worker ant. As well as this, the queen herself also requires protein to produce more eggs, to add to the ever-growing population of the colony. Personally, my favourite form of protein for my ants ever has been crickets which are readily available at pretty much any pet store. To avoid any injuries and or casualties while feeding your ants, I highly recommend killing the cricket before introducing it to the outworld. However, this rule doesn't apply for all species. For example, bigger species like Mimesia, otherwise known as bull ants, may prefer the cricket partially killed or even fully alive depending on the size of the cricket. This is because bull ants rely on their sense of sight to find prey, so a twitching or jumping cricket is food for them. Another point to consider is the sizing of the crickets. I personally prefer to buy crickets in the extra small or small range as my bull ants can take them down easier and overall it reduces the chance of injury or death while feeding my colony. I would love to show you inside my Mimesia nigrosyncta nest, however I'm currently working on an update video for these guys and I would hate to ruin the surprise. In contrast, I feed my Fedole colony completely killed crickets as the species is far too small to go up against any live cricket. Not to mention the colony still resides in a test tube setup, so a live cricket inside there is a recipe for disaster. A good rule of thumb for feeding ant colonies insects is that it's better to be safe than sorry. You'd rather watch a colony devour a dead cricket and grow over time than for your colony's population to be wiped in half from one feeding. In terms of my Fidole's test tube, it is quite festy. However, I'm moving them very shortly due to the mess as well as a leak in the water reservoir. Video on that coming soon. The next option in terms of buying ant food would be to buy some mealworms. I used to swear by mealworms before trying my luck with crickets. Both are viable options however. In my experience, colonies and species that are fussy often aren't the biggest fans of mealworms. I don't know why, there's just been something about the mealworms that some of my colonies just didn't like. But as I said, a good portion of ant keeping is trial and error. And when mealworms and crickets cost only a few dollars at the pet shop, why not pick up both and see what your ants prefer? The next protein option for your ants may come as a strange one, chia seeds. Years ago I used to feed my Fedole colony tons of chia seeds, and with the help of the major workers, they would chop them up, exposing the protein rich flesh inside. I decided to test this same protein option on my 25 worker Fedole colony. However, seen in my last video, you know that there are no majors present yet, so I decided to lightly crush the chia seed to give the little guys a hand. Now you can always try feeding larger ants such as Mimesia chia seeds. However, I think you'll find that the species like Fidole or Mesa will pay far more attention to them as a food source. I remember being a kid. On the holidays, mum and dad were at work 
I couldn't simply go down to my local pet shop. But I have a solution for all you out there. Let's go scavenging. For those of you living in Australia, I can almost guarantee you that you have a spider of some sort living in your room. Whether it be a harmless daddy long legs, one of these unbelievably creepy and gross red house spiders, or even a huntsman spider. They're all a great source of protein. Now, it's not as simple as catch and feed. I'd recommend observing the spider for at least a couple of days, as you can gauge whether or not it's eaten something bad recently. If the spider seems happy and healthy for the past couple of days, I would say you have a decent chance of it being good to feed your ant colonies. However, this method can come with the risk of your spider being poisoned. However, with good attention to detail and observation, you can dodge this. Another tip is to observe spiders that have small webs like daddy long legs or the red house spider, as they are easy to observe and you can keep track of what they eat, whereas huntsman spiders generally appear out of nowhere, so you're taking a bit more of a risk with the huntsmans. Overall, I really recommend this method of foraging, but for spiders only, and I would highly advise against searching for any cockroaches to feed your colony. This is because wild cockroaches in your home have a high chance of being poisoned, whether it be from cockroach baits within your own home, or your neighbours attempting to get rid of a cockroach infestation via the same method. Although the cockroach may seem fine and healthy, you have no way of determining whether or not it's just consumed some poison. So I cannot stress this enough, don't feed your ants cockroaches from your own home. However, there are always options to buy cockroaches from breeders or pet stores, which will sell you healthy and safe cockroaches to feed your colonies, which I've heard are another great source of protein. Thanks for watching. I hope that this video helps you guys. If you have any further questions, feel free to leave them down below. Also, make sure that you're subscribed as I've got an awesome Mimesia video coming soon. If you want to watch the original video on the queen I caught, click this video on your screen now. Ant Invasion, out.